Good morning, sunshine. I'm Coy. Welcome to CNN 10, the best 10 minutes in news. We are coming to you from Detroit today. We're here to report on the excitement surrounding the Detroit Lions. The city sold out the Lions Stadium last night. Even though the team played the San Francisco 49ers in California for the NFC Championship, the team has brought a sense of hope and unity to the entire city all season. Incredible run. Now there's just one NFL game that remains, the Super Bowl in Las Vegas on February 11th. All right, we begin today in the Netherlands, where the International Court of Justice ordered Israel to prevent genocide against the Palestinian people in their ongoing war in Gaza. But before we get into that news, what exactly is the International Court of Justice? The ICJ is the United Nations top court and was created after World War II to address disputes between nations and to give their opinions on international legal issues. While these decisions are binding and cannot be appealed, the ICJ has no way to enforce them. But its opinions can heavily influence the UN and other international institutions. Okay, back to the most recent news. This began earlier this month after South Africa accused Israel of breaching international laws on genocide against the Palestinians in Gaza. South Africa wanted the court to issue an emergency order that would force a ceasefire. Basically, this would act as a restraining order against further military action by Israel in Gaza until the court could consider the full case, and that could take years. Friday, the court's 17-judge panel did order Israel to, quote, take all measures to prevent genocide in Gaza, but it did not demand a ceasefire. And as scrutiny increases on both sides of this war, last week's ruling leaves both Israelis and Palestinians with reasons to feel vindicated and frustrated. It feels like a victory and a significant milestone and a, a step in the right direction in the liberation of the Palestinian people. In a way, it is also very disappointing that the court did not rule in favor for uh, an immediate ceasefire at this time. Like every country, Israel has an inherent right to defend itself. The vile attempt to deny Israel this fundamental right is blatant discrimination against the Jewish state, and it was justly rejected. The charge of genocide leveled against Israel is not only false, it's outrageous, and decent people everywhere should reject it. Pop quiz, hot shot. What percentage of the Earth's surface is covered with water? 50%, 62%, 71%, or 96%? If you said 71%, put your hands up. That's according to U.S. Geological Survey. All right, being up here in Detroit, Michigan, we're nestled between two of the Great Lakes, Lake Huron and Lake Michigan, both of which become frozen uh, this time of year, at least parts of them. Well, for our next story, we head to Antarctica, where a man from here in Michigan is going viral on TikTok as he's sharing his research journey searching for the oldest ice on the planet, all while battling some exceedingly cold conditions. He spoke to our affiliate WXYZ from Sydney, Australia, after completing his third trip near the South Pole. So what's the difference between ice that you make at home in your freezer and ice here in Antarctica? The answer to that is bubbles. If Austin Carter had to pick a theme song, it would probably be Ice, Ice Baby. The 27-year-old doctoral student and Royal Oak native has been living on the southernmost continent for 50 days, where researchers are drilling for ice. So ice cores from Antarctica are this unique scientific resource. Um, they contain a record of Earth's climate that's pretty much unrivaled by other archives. I caught up with him in Sydney, Australia via Zoom this week after he just wrapped up his third trip near the South Pole. He joined researchers from 15 universities and cold X to find the oldest ice on the planet and study the prehistoric dust particles trapped inside. What is the oldest core of ice you've uncovered? Our oldest ice sample that we've collected now is greater than 4 million years old. Um, this is the oldest ice that's ever been collected on the planet. And he's been serving up this polar science knowledge to the masses. Here are five things we can and cannot do while living here in Antarctica. This video racked up 27.5 million views on TikTok. My mother actually encouraged me to do, you know, she was like, you know, people really have a lot of questions. You should make an educational video. 
In our next story, we want to take you on a journey to explore the ocean's twilight zone. This home to ecosystems has rarely been explored or documented by science, but husband and wife divers Emmanuel and Gilan Bardou made it their mission. Our Bill Weir caught up with the team as they were preparing for a six-month-long expedition in the Mediterranean. When you are a diver, you are always curious to go to sea a little bit further. I think every single diver in the world, when uh, you are about to go up, you always have an eye to the depths, to the bottom. Little by little, you want to go deeper because you wonder what, what are you going to find. Guilain Bardot goes deep, much deeper than most. In fact, since setting up under the pole with his wife Emmanuel in 2007, he has conducted thousands of dives, often to 150 or even 200 meters deep. His crew has explored everywhere from the Arctic to the Canary Islands, French Polynesia to the Caribbean. We are talking about huge ecosystem that covered the entire planet, all the shore, everywhere. It's just below 30 meters, 40 meters, and there are for sure many species many uh, different ecosystems that all have a huge importance. So acquiring a better understanding of their ecology is essential for the conservation of uh, those depths. With scientists aboard their boat, Under the Pole aims to document these ecosystems for the first time and help preserve their future. Guilan's team are preparing for a six-month expedition in the Mediterranean that will take them from Greece to Italy, to France. In 2022, Under the Pole helped gain protection for black coral forests in the Canary Islands. And they believe there is a similar ecosystem to be explored on their Mediterranean voyage next year. In Greece, they already explored the depths with uh, robots, ROVs. So they know some fields of black corals, but are not able to study it because of the depths, because they do not have the divers to do so. And I like uh, those missions where uh, there is huge collaborations, you know, with different people uh, that can do together something they cannot do alone or just with their own team. For today's story, getting a 10 out of 10, how many chicken nuggets can you chow down? A California family bit off way more than they could chew. When they ordered food for delivery, our magnificent Jeannie Mo serves up a major Mickey D's mishap. Oh my God! They thought they'd ordered several burgers, some fries, and a few chicken McNuggets. Oh this is a prank. It has to be a prank. Instead, they got inundated with McNuggets, so many that Grandma couldn't count. 30, 40, 50, 60, 60. <laughs> Without bursting into laughter, her son-in-law put his head on the counter. It was nuggets and nuggets and nuggets. Delivered from a McDonald's in Long Beach, California by a DoorDash driver. The guy said this was the biggest order he's ever had. And they didn't skimp on the sauce. Jessica Vaccaro's then four-year-old son had questions. That's a lot! <laughs> Mommy, is that a lot? Grandma, is this funny? Jessica only recently unearthed this 2017 video. She posted it, it went viral. They ended up giving most of the McNuggets to the homeless. We packed them all up and we went down to the beach and we handed them out. Her husband, Chris, thinks he accidentally added a zero, ordering 20 rather than just two 10-piece boxes. He admits he barely looked at the total bill and he dropped this nugget. I consider myself a bit of a chicken McNugget connoisseur. But 200? Give us a McBreak. Nuggets, dip, dip, dip. That's a whole lot of chicken. Dad joke, why are chickens so funny? Because, <laughs> shout out time now. This shout out goes to the Gladiators from Gresham Middle School in Knoxville, Tennessee. We see you, keep shining superstars. And this shout out goes to 
the Patriots at Orange Glen High School in Escondido, California, rise up. Go on out and make a marvelous moment this magnificent Monday, even if it's just making someone smile today. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10.